The global financial system is changing, quietly, steadily, and irreversibly. While mainstream headlines focus on inflation, recession risks, and central bank policies, a far more radical shift is taking place beneath the surface. The dismantling of US dollar dominance in cross-border payments. And at the center of this shift is Ripple. Yes, Ripple, the company behind the XRP ledger, is emerging as the go-to infrastructure provider for central banks, small nations, and financial regulators who are actively building a future beyond SWIFT and the dollar. This isn't a conspiracy theory, it's already happening. Three countries, Bhutan, Palau, and Montenegro, have officially partnered with Ripple to test and deploy blockchain-based payment systems in 2024. Each of them is using Ripple's technology to experiment with central bank digital currencies or CBDCs or stablecoins. And behind the scenes, the International Monetary Fund, or IMF, has acknowledged Ripple in its reports as a serious player in the evolving architecture of cross-border payments. Today, we break down everything you need to know about this quiet financial revolution. What these pilots mean, how they work, how they threaten dollar hegemony, and how investors can get exposure, either through the XRP token, or Ripple's private stock. Let's start with Bhutan. In 2021, the Royal Monetary Authority of Bhutan made headlines when it announced a pilot program with Ripple to launch a CBDC using the XRP ledger. But it wasn't until recently that we began to understand the scale of Bhutan's ambition. Bhutan wants to achieve 85% financial inclusion by building a blockchain-based currency system that eliminates the need for traditional banking intermediaries. By running their CBDC on Ripple's ledger, Bhutan effectively bypasses the need for SWIFT correspondent banking networks or US dollar reserves to facilitate cross-border transactions. This is a major shift, and it's already live. The Ripple CBDC platform allows Bhutan to create a sovereign digital currency with direct real-time settlement capabilities. It's not just about faster payments, it's about sovereignty. Bhutan is setting a precedent. Small nations can create their own monetary rails free from geopolitical strings. Now enter Palau. This Pacific Island nation has made a bold move. In 2022, Palau announced a partnership with Ripple to issue the Palau Stablecoin, or PSC, on the XRP ledger. This government-backed stablecoin is designed to be a digital version of the US dollar, but with a critical twist. It's programmable, transparent, and native to a blockchain that doesn't require third-party intermediaries. By issuing the PSC on Ripple's ledger, Palau is, well, effectively creating a dollar-pegged asset that can be sent globally without routing through American banks or the SWIFT network. And here's the kicker, Palau has hinted that the PSC could evolve into a regional stablecoin used across multiple island nations in the Pacific. Imagine a coalition of small states conducting digital commerce and cross-border remittances using a Ripple-powered currency that sidesteps dollar bottlenecks. That's not just convenience, that's systemic disruption. The third player in Ripple's geopolitical chessboard is Montenegro. In 2023, Montenegro's prime minister publicly confirmed that the country had partnered with Ripple to pilot a CBDC. The announcement took many analysts by surprise. Montenegro is not in the Eurozone, but it uses the Euro unofficially. That gives it, you know, flexibility to experiment. By launching a Ripple-powered CBDC, Montenegro is exploring a parallel payment rail that could operate independently from European monetary policy. The pilot is still in its early stages but the intent is clear, create a digital asset that can handle domestic transactions, remittances and even cross-border settlements, all without relying on euro liquidity from European banks. This is a blueprint for future monetary independence, and Ripple is the backbone. So, why are these countries choosing Ripple? The answer lies in infrastructure. Ripple doesn't just offer a token, it offers an end-to-end -end solution, a CBDC platform, the XRP ledger, compliance APIs, liquidity providers, and a growing list of banking partners across over 55 countries. 
It's a complete stack for building sovereign financial systems that are globally interoperable, yet politically neutral. That neutrality is key. Ripple's tech doesn't impose US jurisdiction, it doesn't require dollar reserves, and it isn't controlled by any single country. For emerging economies and small nations, Ripple offers freedom. Freedom from slow payments, costly intermediaries and geopolitical strings attached to the dollar. And then there's the IMF. In several public reports including its 2022 and 2023 updates on cross-border payment modernization, the IMF lists Ripple as a case study in blockchain infrastructure. One report discusses how distributed ledgers can support both retail and wholesale CBDCs. Another mentions RippleNet and its use of XRP for liquidity provisioning. While the IMF avoids directly endorsing companies, the inclusion of Ripple in these reports signals institutional recognition. This isn't a fringe project. Ripple is being studied and considered by central planners at the highest levels, and when you connect that with real-world pilots in Bhutan, Palau and Montenegro a pattern emerges. But what's at stake here? Simple. The US dollar's monopoly over cross-border finance. For decades, global commerce has relied on the dollar as the unit of account and SWIFT as the messaging layer. That setup gives the US immense power power to enforce sanctions, freeze foreign reserves, and influence foreign monetary policy. Ripple's model challenges all of that. It proposes a world where digital assets, not fiat currencies, facilitate liquidity. In that world, you don't need to hold dollars to transact internationally. You just need access to a decentralized ledger and sufficient XRP liquidity. That's a direct threat to dollar dominance. Now let's talk about the investor angle. There are two ways to get exposure to this macro trend. The first is the XRP token itself. XRP is the native currency of the XRP ledger and serves as the bridge asset for liquidity provisioning. As more central banks and governments use Ripple's infrastructure, demand for XRP as a liquidity token could rise. More usage equals more demand, which, under constrained supply, can push price upward. XRP is liquid, accessible to retail investors, and directly tied to the infrastructure being adopted globally. The second option is Ripple Equity. Ripple is a private company, and its stock isn't publicly listed. However, accredited investors can gain access through secondary private equity platforms or venture funds. Holding Ripple Equity means betting on the company's long-term revenue from licensing infrastructure contracts and possibly IPO gains. It's a different risk profile from XRP, but tied to the same thesis. The future of global finance will be built on Ripple's technology. Of course, there are risks. Regulation is still a major overhang, especially in the United States. The SEC's lawsuit against Ripple has dragged on for years. Although, you know, recent rulings have been increasingly favorable to Ripple. A definitive legal victory could unleash a wave of institutional adoption. A loss would delay but likely not derail Ripple's international strategy, especially given that most pilot programs are outside United States jurisdiction. There's also competition from other ledgers like Stellar, Ethereum, and future central bank digital currency platforms. But so far, Ripple has the edge in institutional relationships and end-to-end -end solutions. To conclude, this isn't just a story about three countries running blockchain pilots, it's a coordinated financial pivot, subtle, strategic, and incredibly powerful. Bhutan, Palau, and Montenegro may be small on the global stage, but their adoption of Ripple's infrastructure sends a message. The global south is looking for alternatives. Ripple is providing them. The United States fights with sanctions, Ripple fights with code, and so far, code is winning. Disclaimer. This video is for educational and informational purposes only. It is not financial advice. Please do your own research and consult with a financial advisor before making any investment decisions.